Since the end of the Second World War, when amplified music began to gain a foothold in the marketplace, musicians, especially guitarists, have sought to employ technology from the very earliest reverb and tremolo units built into their amplifiers right up to tiny digital stomp boxes to alter their sound and create new sound effects. This video will go some small way towards describing the history behind these effects and a 30,000 foot view of the science behind how they're achieved and how you might recognize them in popular recordings that you listen to. There are in general three types of guitar effects. Dirt and fuzz effects, which act by changing the wave shape of the output from the guitar to the amplifier. Mod and pitch effects, Time which and... generally split the signal coming out from the guitar and modulate or alter the frequency of one of those two signals which is created and time and space pedals which affect the way a feedback loop is created coming out of the guitar sending repeat signals which either sustain or degenerate according to the instructions they're given so let's talk about dirt pedals the numbers all go to 11. dirt and fuzz broadly cover three types of effects Overdrive, distortion, and fuzz, each which deal with in some way altering the relationship between the amount of loudness that goes into an amplifier from the guitar, which is called gain, to what comes out, which is called volume, and altering the shape of the sound wave that this creates. An overdrive stomp box simulates loading a low wattage tube amplifier such as was in vogue up to the mid 60s to the point where the signal starts to break up and it gets a bit crackly and funky sounding overdrive depending on the kind of pedal you use and how you set it can make the sound crunchy and give it an urgency or make it sparkly where they add just a little bit of kick to your tone and give the volume a bit of a boost Overdrives are classified either as soft or hard clipping overdrives. Clipping refers to the way a dirt pedal reshapes the signal going from guitar to amplifier. If a guitar tone was a movie, then it would be Lethal Weapon with Danny Glover as soft clipping and Mel Gibson would be the slightly crazier hard clipping. Soft clipping is a gentler, warmer overdrive which doesn't change the shape of the sine wave generated by the guitar signal too much. It just looks for sections where the gain exceeds the maximum the amp can take and trims the signal beyond those peaks, which gives it that sound of suddenly cutting off and breaking up. Hard clipping is a firm no and won't let anything in past the maximum, so it chops off the top and sometimes the sides of the wave. Distortion is different in so much as it involves overloading the amp beyond the point where it would ordinarily break up, which is called saturating the tone. There's a whole bunch of sciencey wincey stuff here. Imagine the three stooges trying to get through a door all at once. They all get squashed a little bit out of shape, but eventually they tumble into the room and Curly hits Mo with a hammer. That's what distortion does. It takes a nice smooth sine wave of sound and severely smooches the top off it and squishes the whole wave shape a lot squarer because the amount of gain so much exceeds the amount of signal the circuit or the amount of stooges exceeds the amount of door. wave shape the cleaner your signal needs to be which is why dirt pedals generally come first in a pedal chain and why the fuzz pedal should go closest to the amp fuzz pedals completely change the waveform from a sine wave into a square wave and messes with the harmonics of the sound they say you don't play a fuzz box the fuzz box plays you Fuzz boxes came out in Nashville in 1960 when some good old boys recording a Marty Robbins album had a short out on the channel recording guitar legend Grady Martin. He played the riff on Roy Orbison's Pretty Woman, which made it sound like bees on meth. In short, there's a huge variety of fuzz pedals and a huge range of subtle differences between each. It's a dirty
Modern effects have almost infinite possibilities, but we'll look here at just the very most common varieties. Basically, and this may be a controversial hot take, most mod pedals are variations on chorus pedals. A chorus pedal takes your signal, splits it in two, plays back the original dry signal, like normal, and then takes a second wet signal and plays it back a little teensy bit out of tune and however much out of time you want it. Flanges are not dissimilar to chorus pedals, whereas a flanger takes a signal and splits it in two, it leaves two dry signals, but delays the second one so that the wave fills almost, but not quite, the gaps in the wave of the first signal, which produces a characteristic swooshing sound. Phaser pedals are similar to, but different from, flanger pedals. Whereas the flanger has the swooshing sound, a phaser actually is meant to simulate the sound of a rotating speak, and it does this by applying filters which change their intensity in relationship to the signal over time, producing a gentle rolling sound. Tremolo and vibrato are cousins which have been available to guitarists either as in-amp effects or as bulky portable inverted commas units for even longer than fuzz. Vibrato works by putting a little wobble on the pitch of your signal and can give you everything from an old Wurlitzer organ effect to a kraken summoning underwatery sounds. So it changes the pitch just ever so slightly up and down at the rate that you specify. The two outliers are wah pedals and univibes. Wah pedals are a mid-frequency filter which take a set range of frequencies in the input and run a filter over them producing a high to low wah sound which is instantly recognized. The other outlier is a univibe. I have no idea what a univibe is. I don't suspect anyone has any idea what a univibe is. Some people say it's a chorus, others say it's a phaser, some people say it sounds like a vibrato. All I know is Jimi Hendrix owned one, check out Machine Gun, and it sounds super cool. The Mod Squad.
Time and space pedals include delays and reverbs. Basically, a delay pedal takes a signal and repeats it almost infinitely at a rate set by a user. There are two main types of delays. Analog delays, which see the repeat sound decay and degenerate the longer that it's been delayed for. And digital delays, which retain tonal purity as it decays and can keep that loop of decay going on for a very long time indeed. and reverb which singers have been using since before sam phillips jury rigged a tape echo for elvis or dusty springfield had to choose between singing in the stairwell of the fire escape or the ladies bathroom to get the sound she wanted or when john bonham dragged his drums out into the lobby of headley grange for when the levee breaks Reverb is a sound coming out of the guitar, sends the dry signal to the amp, and then models the wet signal with a whole bunch of stuff to return it to the guitar between 1 and 50 milliseconds later. <laughs> Anyway, that's a brief overview of the main types of guitar effects that are used by working guitarists either in studio settings 
or particularly in live settings. And should the good Lord be willing and the creeks not rise, we'll see all y'all again in the next Righteous Bojampo. Reverberate for me, you bastard.